Hello and welcome back. Here's our next exercise, another simple linear regression. This time we have, uh, it looks like we have the data for a demand curve. I have some price and I have some quantity uh, information. So before we begin, uh, any of you, if you've taken any economics courses, you, you probably know that when economists draw a demand curve, what they're actually drawing is an inverse demand curve. They're actually drawing price as a function of quantity uh, to, to show that demand curve. What we're going to be estimating here is not the inverse demand curve, but rather just the demand curve. So we'll be, we'll be uh, estimating quantity as our dependent variable, dependent on price. So what this looks like is that I have a quantity is equal to some linear function of price, but it's not a perfect linear relationship. Of course, there's some noise. Now, this might contradict what you've seen in your textbooks, again, because when we draw those demand curves, it's, well, it's better looking than that. But it's, it's just a, a usually a linear function. You don't see the random noise because, of course, these are sort of glorified for textbooks, uh, especially at the introductory level. But in reality, it's not a perfect linear relationship. There's some random noise around that relationship. So what we estimate, of course, is the uh, regression equation. So we're looking at the expected value of quantity. So now we can say, well, if you give me some price, some market price, I can estimate what the average quantity demanded will be at that market price. So of course this is what we are going to be estimating and let's say I'll donate it, I'll denote it lowercase q with a hat. This is just like our y hat that we've used and b0, b1 and here's our, our independent variable price. So what we are going to be estimating again, that y-intercept and that slope coefficient. I didn't really need to do that lowercase, this can still be a, just a p like this. So this is what we'll do. Now, again, we have, uh, as part of this problem, we have a nearly blank uh, Excel output. And so what we're going to do here is, again, we're just going to fill in the blanks. So I'll probably break this up into two or three uh, videos, maybe even four videos. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Because uh, I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to spend an hour in one video going through all of this. So the first thing we'll do, uh, given the information that's in this table, we don't have a lot to work with. I think we'll start off as we did in the first video and we'll just calculate our coefficients. And so the first part of that puzzle uh, is to calculate the slope coefficient because the intercept coefficient is a function of the slope. So what, we're, what we'll do, I'm gonna scroll back up here. I'll clear myself this space because this is gonna, this takes up a little bit of room. Because what we want to do, let me just re, there we go. That, that formula for the slope coefficient, this is the covariance between x and y divided by the variance in x. Now here, make sure we don't get these mixed up, our prices and our quantities, my price is x quantity is going to be y. We have to keep that straight. So what we're going to do for this formula is we'll break it up into its different parts and then once we get all of the pieces of this formula then it becomes much easier to calculate. So what we'll do is I'll have one column of these differences between x values and x bar. We'll do the same thing for the y values and then we multiply those together. So we'll have here a column of the product of those first two columns and then we'll add all of those up and so somewhere down here uh, we'll have our numerator value. So this here, if I, I can just fill this in, this, whatever number ends up in there, that will be our numerator and then finally we'll square that first column. So this will be xi minus x bar squared and then we'll add those up and that will give us uh, this pink number that will give us our denominator. And then it's as simple as taking a ratio of those two and we'll have our slope coefficient. And then from that we can we can figure out our, our y-intercept. So 
I've sort of cheated. Uh, as, if you've watched any of my other videos, you've seen me fumble around with this calculator and make all kinds of silly mistakes with it, uh, which has led to more trouble than it's worth, I think. So uh, I've got, I've cheated. I've got the answers on my computer screen here in front of me. And uh, so I'll just, we'll go through it still relatively slowly. I don't want to lose you, um, but without having to do all the tedious calculations. So first of all, keep in mind, we're looking at price is our X. So our, our X bar, this is our 56, and then we're gonna go through each of these five numbers. So the first one will be 61 minus 56, and this is five. 57 minus 56, this is one. Another 57, that's a one. 52 minus 56, minus four. And then 53 minus 56 is a minus three. So that's painless enough, I think. Uh, we do the same thing now on our dependent variable uh, y, or quantity in this case. So our, our y bar now, this is 7.6, and I'll just go down uh, in a similar fashion. I'll change my color here. Uh, so 3, first one is 3 minus 7.6, so minus 4.6. Uh, the next one will be 5 minus 7.6, so minus 2.6. And then we have 0.4, 10 minus 7, so 2.4, and finally 4.4. Okay, so that last one was the 12 minus 7.6. So there we've got all of the differences. Now, our uh, next column, we just multiply those two columns together. So this is going to be 5 times minus 4.6. This is going to be minus, let me change my color here just to, just to mix it up a little bit. So this will be minus 23, and then this is one times minus 2.6, so minus 2.6 again, one minus, uh, times 0.4, so this is 0.4. Next one is minus four times 2.4, so this is minus 9.6, and the very last one, minus three and 4.4, minus 13.2. Okay, so that's this column, let's call this column three. This is just column one times column two equals column three, okay? Now, to get that final number in that yellow box at the bottom, we just add all of these up. So 23 plus, I don't wanna put marks in there, 23 plus minus 2.6 plus 0.4, so on and so forth. This would add up to give us minus 48. Now, I might have some rounding error in there, one or two decimal places. I'm not too picky about uh, some small little deviation, some small rounding error. It's not the end of the world. So minus 48 is what we'll go with. Uh, now our last column, four. Four is just uh, column one squared. So I just look at these values over here. So five squared, this is 25. One squared is one. One, four squared, 16. 3 squared is 9, and then I add all of these up, and this gives me 52. So there I have our denominator value. So now, let me just give myself some space. I have minus 48 divided by 52, and this gives me our coefficient, am I squeezing this in? There we go, minus 0.92. It's a little bit tight. Okay, so here we have, let's get it in down here. Here's our coefficient, minus 0.92, okay? So once we get all of the pieces of that puzzle, the, the, the rest of the calculation is relatively straightforward. But as you can see, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit tedious. Now I'm going to make a note of this number here. We're gonna need that number again. Uh, for part B. So here I'm just going to scribble this down in the margins because we're going to come back to this so this is 52, okay? Just because I'm going to need to erase this and I don't want to lose it all. Okay, so we have our slope coefficient. This is minus. That's a, an important part of it. <laughs> Always a negative relationship between uh, price and quantity, right? So our next part is to calculate our intercept so our intercept term is uh, y bar minus b1 times x bar. And so y bar, this is 7.6 minus 
minus our slope coefficient, which was negative 9.92, and x bar is 56. And so this is equal to, uh, crunch the numbers there, and we should get 59.3 as our uh, y-intercept. So I'm gonna scribble this back down in here. Oops, silly thing. 59.3 as our y-intercept. So finally, now we have, again, our key result. So we have, we can write this out in our general notation here, y hat is 59.3 minus 0.92x. Of course, this is uh, a demand equation that we've calculated. So we can call this q hat uh, quantity is a negatively related to price. So what does this mean? Well, you give me some price uh, and I can estimate the average quantity demanded at that particular price. We have therefore an inverse, or we have a demand equation. So if I draw, if I graph this Q as a function of price, we would have here this y-intercept is 59.3 and the slope is negative 92. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now, what, what can we do with this? Again, we can use it for estimation. As I just suggested, we can put in some value of price and estimate an average quantity demanded, or perhaps we're just interested in the value of this intercept. So for every one unit change in our independent variable, so what that would imply is for every $1 change in price, quantity demanded or average quantity demanded declines by 0.92. Okay, and then we'll also look at uh, developing confidence interval estimates and prediction interval estimates in part B, uh, but I think I'll put that off until the end once we've got everything uh, put together because not a lot of point in doing these estimates uh, and prediction intervals until we know for sure that our relationship here is statistically significant. And so for that, we'll do some hypothesis testing and we'll calculate these uh, interval estimates for our coefficients and we'll go from there. So I think I'll end this video now and I'm just over 12 minutes. So this is just to calculate our coefficients and here we have our estimated regression equation. So I'll end it here and we'll come back uh, right away and we'll go through our hypothesis testing. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.